or agile agilists and agile manifesto signatories all know Jerry Weinberg. And I love the book. I, I forgot the title, but um, um, is the lights on or something? Is the lights on? Or psychology of um, consultant. Uh, the, all those books. Gerald uh, Weinberg. Hmm? There's translation. Okay. I circulated. Uh, present from Japan and everybody got that? A snack, a Japanese snack. Some of them are very hot. <laughs> uh, this one is the hottest snack in Japan. So I know Korean people are good at uh, hot things. So you think this is hot? No. Oh, this is very hot. Who, who ate this? Who? Hot? Not yet? Okay, who tried this? <laughs> Good, okay, <laughs> thank you. Do you think this is hot? <laughs> you are all challenging me. <laughs> So, shall we start or... S okay. Annyeonghaseyo. Um, uh, my, my name is Kenji Hiranabe uh, from Japan. I uh, arrived here tomorrow, uh, yesterday. Uh, because I'm from Japan, uh, I want to bring something very Japanese. <laughs> so I will talk about uh, this title, Creating Knowledge with Users. Um, do you know where the word Scrum is from? Hmm? Scrum is a uh, rugby scrum. But um, the first paper that described Scrum as a development process is a Japanese person. Oh, you know that. Who? Somebody know the name? Uh, Ikujiro Nonaka and Takeuchi. And, um, I recently wrote a book with Nonaka-san. Nonaka-san is an old person too, uh, like, like 75. And he still talks to the audience. And I wrote a book uh, with him, so I would like to talk about you, talk about this to you today. And uh, first thing is uh, Korea, uh, to us, to Japanese, some, some cultural uh, thing, is like this. <laughs> it's called K-pop in Japan and very popular. You, you know them too, right? And another one is this. <laughs> it's famous all over the world. And, and the hotel I'm, I'm staying this uh, time is uh, near Gundam Station. So I was so excited. <laughs> and Japan, to you, maybe this. <laughs> you know this? Yeah. What, what do you call, call this? Yeah? <laughs> In Korean. Shin? Oh, Shingeki no Kyojin in Japanese. <laughs> but um, I, I'm, I was happy because I, I found that this is famous in uh, Korea too. So, uh, Agile is about, this is a waterfall process, right? Uh, divided into phases, and there's a wall, and documentation is thrown away to the later processes. So what I'm talking about is breaking this wall. Uh, so I, I came here to Korea from Japan because I want to break the wall <laughs> between us. And a wall is like this. <laughs> so developers here <laughs> and product owner, wow, and customers and users. <laughs> so you have to break the wall between the customers and developers. You have to talk with users. Otherwise, you will be <laughs> eaten. <laughs> so, uh, my today's agenda is, uh, I'm going to first talk about Nonaka Scrum, the original Scrum, about it's about people. And second part is about using mind mapping to talk with users. So two, two parters. 
So a bit of my uh, introduction. I'm a translator, book translator of those books, um, XP books and Lean books, and um, C++ book. That's an old one, and uh, Jim Copeland's book. And recently, I wrote a book with Nonaka-san. And um, I'm a CEO of uh, Asta.net. Um, does someone here knows the product Asta or Jude? It's an UML editor. Somebody knows this product? OK, thank you. <laughs> In Japan and Brazil, uh, they, are, they are very famous, common. So Scrum is like this. Uh, oh, I have one picture from Japan, too. This is a original Scrum, and Japanese Scrum is like this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not here to joke all the time, but um, I like this picture because it's so Japanese and here, stakeholders, looks a bit mean. <laughs> okay, so as I said, do you know where the Scrum come from? This person is uh, Nonaka Ikujiro, Ikujiro-sensei, and uh, this is Jeff Sutherland, one of the uh, creator of uh, Scrum. And uh, in 2011, we held an um, event called Innovation Sprint. And the first time they, they met. And they, they are so, both are very glad. And he did not know, by the time, he did not know that his work is referenced by Jeff Sutherland's book and coming back to Japan. So he, he wrote this paper. Uh, sorry, I will start with this one. Uh, the book, this book is written by Ken Schreber and Mike Beadle in, uh, I forgot, but 90 something. And uh, this book starts from this quote. This book, Agile Software Development with Scrum, starts with this uh, quote saying the, the relay race approach to product development may conflict with the goals of maximum speed and flexibility. Instead, a holistic or rugby approach, where the team tries to go the distance as a unit, passing the ball back and forth, may better serve today's competitive requirements. This sentence is from this paper, The New New Product Development Game, written by Hirotake Takeuchi and Ikujiro Nonaka in 1986. And this is uh, page 137 of Harvard Business Review. And it's, the title is The New New Product Development Game. And it says, stop running the relay race, race and take up rugby. There's two, two news here. So first new is new. And second new is about new product. So it's a new way of doing new product development. So not a series of development or uh, making version one, version two. Let's say about making something very new which, is not, which does not exist at the time. So new product development is very difficult. But Japanese, some Japanese company is doing it not like relay race, but like rugby. And in this paper, the picture is drawn like this. It's about new, uh, product de new product development uh, phases. And uh, by the way, this uh, paper does not say anything about software. And uh, Ikujiro Nonaka does not know at all about software. So this is about a product, not software at that time, software-centric. But, but nowadays, software is the center of product. So it's becoming more and more meaningful, more and more making sense. So this type A, type A is from NASA, uh, US, NASA's uh, called PPP, phase, phase uh, planning project or something, PPP. And this one is from Fuji Xerox, and this one is from Honda. Honda is a uh, car company in Japan. Maybe I think you have Honda cars here in, in Korea too. So in this picture, we, we are all software engineers, maybe, I assume. This looks like waterfall and scrum. But it says that this type of development has phases, and there's a wall, and different people are working in different places. And uh, function is divided into teams, and they are passing handoffs around. And this one is a bit 
uh, merged area phase is here. And this one is all collapsed, all accumulating into almost one team. So this type of new product development process is called Scrum in his book, no, in his paper. So uh, today I'm going to sp speak about this part. Uh, this is a, a big picture of uh, Agile and Lean. Agile is here. Started from XP and Scrum as a concrete process, and it's, they are both uh, ref have uh, history from patterns language. And also Scrum has origin it's from this new, new product development in Japanese manufacturing industry. And also in Japan there's Toyota production system called TPS, which is later uh, abstracted into lean thinking, and then it is affects all these, these lean uh, umbrella. It's, there is re lean construction, lean service, lean office, lean anything, lean startup. So we are here in Agile world, and recently lean startup is spawned. So I'm talking about this part. So what Ikujiro uh, did was, first one is he made the term Scrum, and then he wrote this knowledge creating company. In, in this book, he explained how new knowledge is created. It's called Seki model. I'll, I'll uh, explain it later. And also, he wrote this managing flow. And this introduces a new type of leadership called phonetic leadership. And the last one is he wrote a book about US Marine and how cross-functional teams work together. So I'll start with this one. But I, I have not many uh, uh, hours, so I'll s do it very quick. I have 30 minutes left. <laughs> so I what Ikujiro Nanaka said is almost this one. There are two types, types of knowledges. One is called tacit knowledge, and the other is called explicit knowledge. How many of, of you are familiar with these terms? Ah, good, thank you. Tacit and explicit. And he said that knowledge is creating by this uh, transformation between the two knowledge. So I will explain it uh, more detail. Tacit knowledge. Tacit. Intangible. And uh, subjective and uh, experiential, which cannot be expressed in words or formulas or written things. Like this, I'm not sure what she's knitting, but she is knitting something. It's a craft. Uh, you, may, you can write how to knit this thing in writing a book, but a good craft is always uh, done Maybe she will uh, teach someone beside her to how to knit. So not write right things and pass it to someone. So it's very difficult to write all those uh, skills into a written knowledge. Written knowledge is explicit knowledge. And experience. Uh, people can tell something to others using this tacit knowledge too, not written. Like um, when you teach your kids how to ride a bicycle, you don't write every specifications, how to uh, stairs or how to uh, ride. Maybe you will go with your kids in the park or somewhere and assist him and then later you let him go. So like that, tacit knowledge can be transferred from someone to someone without words, by doing it, experiencing it together. So this type of knowledge is called tacit knowledge. And the other one is called explicit knowledge, which is, I, um, this is a picture, is like a book of a books. And uh, books are, of course, written. So human beings is uh, currently 
in the, the top of the uh, animals because we have this written knowledge. So that, so that uh, conveys knowledge, uh, Newton's or Einstein's knowledge by writing, by books. So generation from generation, we can uh, trans transfer the knowledge, move knowledge from one, one generation to generation, and accumulate the knowledge. So this type of knowledge, written knowledge, is objective, rational knowledge, and expressed in words, sentences, numbers, and formulas. So this type of knowledge is a explicit knowledge. And a formula is an, a very typical one because it is true all the time. No, no matter where it is, uh, like formula or physics, uh, it works everywhere. But this type of knowledge does not work, uh, not everywhere. It's context specific. Software development is somehow this include this type of knowledge. So what Nonaka discover is this, this how you can carry this uh, uh, tacit knowledge from users to developers. So he made this model called Seki model. He made this, and this is the most well-known in knowledge management uh, area, and it's called Seki model. So, those four activities are transformation activities from some type of knowledge to some type of knowledge. So, I will, I will explain this. So, this socialization is tacit to tacit, like uh, experiencing together to get skill. So s somehow knowledge start from this, without words. So experiencing something, and then somebody externalize, externalize making uh, books or writings, make it uh, explicit. It's called externalization, which trans transfer tacit to explicit. So here, knowledge can be portable. You can pass it to, to the, the knowledge to someone. And then this part, combination. Once you have written knowledge, you can combine knowledges. One different type of, sorry, a different knowledge into one. Like almost all the invention is happen here. Combining two inventions together. So this is explicit to explicit. So the last part is called internalization, which means by doing it, some, some knowledge, by doing it, you absorb into your body to make it uh, tacit knowledge again. So what he says is knowledge comes from something tacit or subjective or like belief or some, some unwritten something and experiencing it together, then it's written and it's combined to create new knowledge and then it's coming back to you as a tacit knowledge by learning, learning by doing it. So that's all what he says. Uh, in the internet, maybe you can find more uh, concrete or an uh, uh, analysis here. So I will give you one example. It's about home bakery system. Do you have home bakery in Korea? It's a bre bread maker. Bread, not rice cooker, bre bread cooker. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the 80s, there were no bread maker in the world. So Matsushita Electric at that time made the, this new product. So this is a story from that. The person Call, uh, whose name is Ikuko Tanaka. She's a, um, she's a uh, cooking science. She's from cooking science. I don't know if that category <laughs> exists, but anyway, cooking scientist. And she, because she was in that, into it, uh, the first time she was uh, involved in this project, she said, that, she said that she thought it was a call Oh, I feel a calling in this job. So he, she believed somehow this is what she wants to do first. So that's the starting point. Every time new knowledge 
is from subject, subjective belief or uh, thing, not data. And uh, at that time, 1984, three divisions, rice cooker division, heating appliance division, and rotation divisions are integrated into cooking appliance divisions. And the, this is the team. And the first word she said was, let me do it. So, let me do it, is the first word she said. So she was involved into the team, and I start working on a new product, uh, bread baker. And the first attempt was fails. So she analyzed and analyzed, but didn't understand what's wrong. So because this is a, the very first product, so it says that uh, bread is very sensitive. Proper cooking time changes one hour if the temperature of, uh, of the dough differs in one degree. So I'm, I'm not a uh, baker, so I don't know this. But uh, this is difficult to do it in, in machine. So, so, this is the important part. She proposed an idea to the project manager. What was that? Where is the knowledge? She said, let me work with him with an apprentice. Apprentice is a, a word for learning uh, men with master, okay? So who him? Who is him? Him. <laughs> she research, did a research and uh, she found a very good bread which is made by this man at Osaka International Hotel. There is a good uh, lead uh, bread maker and she apprenticed herself into this place and worked together to get that knowledge that knowledge meaning how to make good bread and she she implemented or her team implemented into the uh, bread machine so it's it's she is a software uh, engineer and she goes there, and with the hardware engineer too, they made prototypes again and again, and she wants to make his, his tacit knowledge into explicit knowledge as a product, bread maker. And she said, I ate 5,000 pieces of bread in those three years. <laughs> <laughs> so, finally, finally, she was successful. So what she found was he not only slap but also twists and stretches the dough. When I found it, I went straight to the hardware engineer and talked about it. And this switch, sorry, twisting stretch is implemented as this lid, this this rib. So uh, slapping is easy, but um, stretching was difficult in that machine. So she added this rib so that this uh, propeller, this is the uh, front view uh, of the machine. So this is the, uh, this, and there's a propeller turning. And by this rib, the dough is uh, somehow stretched. So with this uh, rib, the uh, stretch motion is implemented. So what I I'm, I'm want to say here is the tacit knowledge is now implemented as this explicit knowledge as this rib. So from that tacit knowledge, explicit knowledge transformation is uh, what Nonaka sensei found and he described it in his uh, books. And it is also written, not explicitly, uh, explicitly written in Scrum book, but it's, his idea is from this uh, episode. So, okay, and uh, there is a movement called design thinking now. And it's, uh, it's, the book is written by Tim Brown. And in this book, it also has how to ideate things. Oh, 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 design thinking has a term like ideation. Ideation is from idea to plan. So in ideation phase, they 
do like this. If you are making some medical machine, you have to go hospital and do, just do as patients do and feel something without written thing. Uh, just go, go and feel something to get back some tacit knowledge. It says trigger empathy for actual users. And there's a way called body storming. Interesting, using body to brainstorm. This picture is from uh, Noraka-san's book, and uh, it's about Honda, Soichiro Honda, the, the first founder of Honda Motor Corporation. And he, he is the founder of Motor, Honda Motors. He goes to this field and see the users, but not just seeing it, he is crouching with his hand on the ground. He is listening to the sound of the engine with his hand. And she, he tries to look not from outside, but from the user's view. What he is thinking and what he is feeling. He wants to catch that emotion or not written something <laughs> into him. And he goes back to his factory and talk about it to the team. So as an analogy uh, to a software development, he, Soichiro Honda, is the, uh, the most effective product owner, I think. He goes to the users and experience it and uh, bring that tacit information to the uh, development team and talk with the development team. So what this diagram really means is not the face. It's about the face too, but it's about people, not divided by the walls. It's, it's people doing it together, thinking together. And somebody, somebody should run through whole this process. So this is Honda Soichiro, who first experience with users, then bring that back to the team and work with the team and he does not leave the team. So all the time he is keeping the knowledge. So the, my title, title of this presentation is uh, People as the Conveyor of Knowledge. Not, not specification, but people, human being as the conveyor of knowledge, using tacit knowledge. Okay, uh, this is the part one, and I have 10 minutes left, so uh, I'm, do, I'm going to do another presentation, which is almost also about how to capture knowledge of the users. I'm using mind mapping a lot when we do user interviews, so I will show you how to do it. How many of you are, are using mind mapping in note taking? Oh, so many, thank you. I like mind mapping too because it's a one picture all in one and it has words and pictures at the same time so that you can remember. This is a picture and words together same, at the same time example too. It's from Da Vinci's uh, picture. So a uh, giant uh, genius, uh, historical genius uses pi pictures and words together. And this is the um, thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Much longer. Okay. Okay. But I'm doing fine. <laughs> good. 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 Good news. So um, interesting because the keynoter today said about this too, right? right uh, hand side of the, your brain and the left, left hand side. There's the two cortex in your brain. Oh, this is not scientifically uh, accurate anymore, but some, some is true, some true remaining. So left hand side and right hand side. The left hand side is functions uh, for, has functions for writing, language, scientific skill, mathematics, list, logic, all those thinking thinking logically, uh, seriously. And the right-hand side is about emotions or pictures or um, colors, 
uh, imaginations, dimensions. And uh, one thing in, in, in interesting is gestalt. Gestalt is a word for um, one whole thing. So mind mapping is one whole thing. I use mind ma mapping because Linear nodes gets longer and longer, but uh, mind mapping gets denser and denser when you take notes. So keeping one page. So mind mapping is using this left hand side thing like words and picture together so that you can make the whole. So I'm I'm telling you uh, about, in, about mind mapping because I use mind mapping with users. And uh, sometimes I use this for note making for when I read books. Like this, I, um, as I read books, I make uh, th those branches, uh, chapter one, chapter two, like that. And uh, I place this note uh, in front of this book usually so that you can remember the, the contents of the book. I used to uh, fold the, the corner of the page when I have found something that is interesting, that called maybe dog, dog's ear or something, pages. But uh, I found that it does not work very well because you turn so many pages, <laughs> so you get confused. But making these notes is making an index to your brain, actually. Uh, Tony Buzan, the creator of Mind Map, says, uh, your brain has all the memories you experienced, but you do not have index to those memories and cannot extract the information from that place. So the whole experience you experienced is recorded as DVD and in your brain, but you cannot access to those one part of that memory. So this mind map works as an index because when I see this, I remember the time when I read this book. So I got this picture and oh, I read chapter one and I, at that time I read this information and, I, uh, and then I go to the uh, index and find the, the part. That works very well. Okay, so I will do a demonstration of how I work with users using mind mapping. So I have, um, I would like to introduce to you uh, Satomi, who is helping me, because I'm going into a demonstration. And she pretend to be a user, and um, I'll pretend to be a development team leader. Hi. Hi. And, um, you made the mic. Okay, use two. There. Yes. Uh, this is the format I usually use to interview with um, users. So pretend I visit users. One user. <coughs> <laughs> Nervous. <laughs> uh, knock, knock. Hello? I'm Kenji Hironabe. I have an appointment with uh, Ms. Joba today. Well, hello, Mr. Hironabe. I'm Satomi. You can call me Satomi. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice to, to meet you. Nice to meet you. Please. Please have a seat. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I heard that, uh, okay, pretend I'm sitting. I heard that you are planning to develop a new system in this library. So I'm here today to hear about it. Yes, thank you for coming all the way. Oh, by the way, on the way here, some staff members said hello to me very nicely. I really like that. Do you always do that? I hope so. This week is uh, Say Hello Week. We try to be nice to the visitors so they feel comfortable and they can come to the office again and often. <laughs> That's a good program. Here I, I with this note, I, I uh, step back from the conversation and I note something. Uh, from the uh, beginning of the interview, you say some one good thing about your client before you start the interview so that you can get intimate. Oh, actually, I 
provided you uh, Japanese uh, gifts so that I can <laughs> make good imp impression for you. Okay, um, well, I often use mind mapping to record what we discuss. May I take notes as you uh, ask questions? Sure, may I see that mind map? Yes, of course. I prepared a mind map for this interview to avoid forgetting important questions. Uh, these are four branches, one, two, three, four branches in the mind mapping. And I'm going to ask you in this order, but say anything you want to say anything you think of it. Okay. Uh, this, this type of interview is called uh, semi-structured interview because part of the interview is prepared, structured but um, accommodates unexpected ideas, things, using mind mapping. So there's three branches and homework branches, but you can add any branches uh, on the fly. So mind mapping is very good at handling this type of interview. Okay, uh, to begin with, I'd like to ask you about the motivation of the system. Why did you think you want to introduce a new system in this library? Well, one thing is the budget. We've always wanted to do this kind of system for a very long time. And finally, we've got the budget to do this. Oh, good, good. So one thing is budget. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Uh, uh, what else? Why you want the budget anyway? Currently, we use paper forms and record a lot of paper we use. It is very time consuming to deal with all the information by the papers. So staff members here overwork every day for the paperwork. I want to reduce it. So staff members overwork. Yes. Okay. Okay, is there anything else? Yes, another thing is a long waiting line of the book forward. Returning books is easy, but when you borrow books, staff members in the counter have to write a lot of information on a borrowing form, so you have to wait for a long line. Okay, I see. Um, okay, so may I see the line? The line? Yeah. The <laughs> to line. to okay. go visit your place and okay. see the line? Come over here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, note, uh, whenever you can, you visit and you see things, and maybe video record it. So, when I video record, and you can paste it into... Okay. <laughs> it doesn't work now, but you can paste uh, video or pictures or anything into this mind map so that you can remember vividly. And uh, the other thing is that the why part is very important because uh, the motivation of the system is the must requirement factors of the system. If you miss those points, you miss the whole, whole expectation of users. That means the system will be useless. In this conversation, for example, if the system is too slow and this uh, time consuming, this part is not fulfilled, the user would be very unsatisfied. So this is a core part of uh, the systems. And this, she said budget passed, meaning that this project is maybe budget driven. So maybe there's some budget, fixed budget there. So you can catch that information here. Okay. Uh, next question is going to be, who is using the system? Okay, this system is mainly for the staff members called clerk. Clerks are service staff at the counter who helps the board for the book. Okay. Uh, but the syst so the, you say that uh, uh, visitors do not use the system? No. Uh, wait, yes, they may want to search books. Well, but the system is mainly a back-end system housing library stuff. So you said that visitor is not a main user. But possible users. Okay, it's possible. Yes. So maybe we'll talk about this next time. Okay, sounds good. So, or future, 
future. So what else you said? It, you said um, clerk, sorry, clerk and visitors. Okay. Okay. Okay, then I will go on to the next question. When do the do they use the system? Okay, the clerk um, uses first of all when uh, clerks help our visitors borrow the books. This is the longest line in the library as I mentioned earlier. I see. So borrow book. Mm -hmm. And and when they return books, but this is an easy part. Return book, okay. And? And maybe you don't know about this, but there are a lot of work after the library is closed. Like mm -hmm. registering new books, returning the return books to the original shelf. I see, I see. So maybe register book. So I, I understand those, but who register books? Uh, they are other staff members called librarians. Oh, librarian. So there's other members. Yes. So member clerk, so visitors, sorry, not visitors, but clerk, clerk and librarian. Yes. So those two are the possible uh, users right now, right? Yes. Okay. Clerk and librarian. Okay, those two possible. Okay, so what I'm doing here is uh, asking the, the users of the system, clerk, librarian, when is going to be some uh, user stories or use cases? Okay, so clerk is not a visitor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so visitors, so staff okay. members are clerk and visitors. Yes. And visitors are not main user, but possible okay. in the future. Yes. Okay, I see. Um, so where are we? <laughs> oh, oops, oh, it's almost the time, it's almost time. Okay, okay. <laughs> Can you uh, walk through what we have got here for just five minutes? Okay, so today I asked why you are going to make the system. So you said budget passed yes. and paperwork mm -hmm. and waiting line is so, so long. And a staff member called clerk and librarian mm -hmm. are using the system. Mm -hmm. And visitors would be um, maybe future user. Yes. They may want to use the system, but not right now. Not right now, okay. And uh, when they use, you, they, they use the system when, you, mm -hmm. when they borrow book, return book, and register book. Correct. Okay, and I would add this line here. Register book is done by librarian, maybe? Yes. Okay, so this is special. Uh, use case or a special mm -hmm. case right for librarian okay um, based on this information we got today we will explore uh, further to create a whole map of your expectation uh, will you prepare a list of service for visitors like search book maybe yes I put this into homework branch okay that would be my homework okay um, service for visitors. This. Okay. So when would be the next meeting? Okay, how about next Monday? Next Monday. Oh, next Monday I will be in Japan. I will be in Japan too. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so you see you in Japan then. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay, nice talking with you. <laughs> talking you. with you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. <laughs> ah, sorry about the silly skit, but uh, uh, I use a lot this mind mapping to talk with users. And after I did this, I got this list of uh, who's and when's and I sometimes make maybe use case diagram from this list clerk as visitors Oops.
and uh, those borrow, return, register book as, as use cases to make a first example uh, use case diagram like this. And you can also start writing uh, user stories from this information too. Maybe I, I uh, prepared a user story uh, too. Uh, I, will, I think I can show you too. Like this. Borrow book. In order to borrow book as a clerk, I want to do something. Or in order to return book, I, as a clerk, I want to do something like that. You can do that in mind mapping too. And you can handwrite it too. And uh, because mind map is just a um, tree structure, so you can convert it into th uh, tree structure like, uh, like this is Excel tree structure. You can just just copy copy this uh, mind map into this and paste it so you can see the branches like this and because it's a tree structure so, so everything can be oops no okay like this is another tree structure you can copy and you can make a mind map diagram software you can uh, paste it paste it to have those branches so mind mapping works very well because you can move things around so you can brainstorm like using a whiteboard so I use them a lot in our development too it's more flexible than UML so you can u u use it uh, casually. So back to my presentation. So my idea is from user wish, talking with users, you can make big picture mind map, and then you can make user stories and things, and you can uh, do estimation, planning, prioritization, testing too. OK, maybe I made it. OK. So this is my uh, idea. One was uh, Nonaka's thing. It's about transformation from tacit knowledge uh, to explicit knowledge using the uh, bread machine example. And the other one is uh, using mind mapping to talk with users to capture user wish uh, together. So thank you very much. Oh, uh, by the way, the tool is, um, I'm making the tool, so if you uh, would like to use it, I would like to, I'm happy to give you one. So I'll take questions, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay, later, please come to me. Yes. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.